your regularly scheduled programming to tell you a very special announcement. I have merch now. Today I'm dropping my very first line of official merch. So allow me to introduce you to the Dewey collection. I put a lot of love, a lot of sweat and tears and anxiety into designing this first little collection. I'm super excited with how everything came out. And I just want to say a quick thank you so much to everybody on Twitter and Instagram for helping me come up with fair prices for this. I really tried to get the prices as low as possible while also getting the best quality products. So I, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. So this is the Dewey collection. It comes in t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies, all in five different colorways. So the t-shirt comes in black for your local bat like me, white banana cream, which is my personal favorite, ice blue, and then light blush pink. I love, love, love the colorways of this t-shirt. It also comes in a crew neck sweatshirt style. Again, black, white. We have this really nice deep purple shade that I really love. Again, blush pink, because of course, and a bright gold yellow shade, because you know I love my mustards in this house. <laughs> and then finally, there's a hoodie option as well. We have black, white, my personal favorite, light blue, the light pink shade again, and then finally, the gold bright yellow shade. Tees are priced at $22, crew neck sweatshirts are $34, and then the pullover hoodie is $38. And if you want a more affordable option and you really like the dewy design or you just don't want to wear it on your clothes, I'm also selling some custom stickers as another part of my merch. These are available on Redbubble. They come in glossy, matte, and then my personal favorite translucent, which I have on my laptop right now. And if by any chance you don't find anything you super love in this first launch, but also I will be doing like round twos and threes and future merch launches in general. So this is just the beginning. I'm super excited about it. Round one of the merch is available right now. It will be the first link in the description box. I'm so excited about this. Thank you guys so much in advance for supporting it. And I love you to the moon and back. So yeah, I think I've rambled enough about the merch. Take it away, Julia. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I just realized it's been hot minute since I've done a favorites video, which is weird because I talk about things I like very often on this channel, but I haven't done like a synthesized current favorites video. These are the things I've been really just deeply in love with lately. So just wanted to share them with you guys because I figured it's summer, got my hat on backwards. And it's time to fucking party. No better time to share my favorites. So I have about 14 different things to share with you guys today. I hope you guys enjoy this one. As always, full details of this makeup look should already be on Instagram. My face is especially dewy today. I had a facial yesterday at Caudalie. And side note, it was the best facial I've ever had in my life. I really like the Abbott Kinney entire like area. And my esthetician Gabriella has become my new favorite facialist. So I think I'm gonna be going back there very often. Thank Thank you again to Caudalie and Octoly for giving me this awesome experience. But yeah, great facial. My face feels amazing. <laughs> my pores are detoxing. I'm fine with it. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. So yeah, without further ado, let's do it. I'm so awkward. All right, I'm gonna start off with probably the love of my life of 2019. And these are the cover effects monochromatic duos. Y'all know that I'm like a hoe for really nice packaging. But when I first saw these, I was like, <sighs> those will be mine. But right, I normally feel like things that are this pretty don't always have the best formula. Cover effects really puts a lot of care and quality into their things. So I'm wearing both of these duos on my cheeks today. This is the Sunkissed Bronze Duo. I think it's the lighter of the two bronzers. And then the Spiced Cinnamon Duos. This has become my favorite matte bronzer in my collection. I just really love working with this one. And surprisingly, even though I really despise dewy bronzers, this one is just like subtle enough that it brings a nice amount of like warmth and light to the face without looking like highlighter. I really want to try out the Warm Honey Duo, but they have so many different shades of these duos that you definitely will be able to find one that will suit your fancy. The main thing I really like about these is that it's very difficult to over apply, I feel like. Normally with like powder bronzers, I can go really overboard. So lately, especially during summer, I've just been going for cream bronzers more often because I am very lazy during summer, so most of the time I'm not really paying attention to how much pressure I'm applying with my powder products, and I can go way too hard with a powder bronzer. These ones though, I feel like it's just hard to make these look really bad, so I can put as much of this as I want on and it'll still blend out really well. So these are very expensive, but you are actually getting quite a lot of product in here. Like The total weight of this is half an ounce, which is a lot for a powder product. I really like these, and I hate that they're so expensive and that I love them so much, but these are... Definitely, definitely going to be in the 2019 favorites video, so just get ready for that. 
you already knew. Spoilers. ColourPop's monochromatic palettes are definitely my favorite eyeshadow palettes that they offer. Possibly one of my favorite things that they have on their entire like website, which is crazy for me to say because I have so many favorites from ColourPop and probably a good 30% of my collection is made up of ColourPop. But ever since I got the Aha uh -huh Honey palette, I've been using it very often for like subtle yellow looks and very bold yellow looks depending on what I want to go for that day. I just think it's very easy to use. The formula in here is really, really good. And it's so hard to create really nice yellow mattes and these are just the best yellow mattes I've tried in a long time. So I really enjoy this yellow pal, but ever since I got this one, I've been putting in more effort to use the green and the purple more often. And I just think that they're really fun. I love smaller, kind of like more concise palettes for summer. And I just think that mini palettes are kind of making their comeback. And I'm very happy about that. I'm still waiting for the Brights palette, but until then I will be using these very often. My love for the yellow palette has kind of almost convinced me to buy the blue palette. I'm still not gonna because I'm holding true to my principles right now, but if that periwinkle blue ever catches me in a weak moment, you know I'm gonna be there. Also, I have to shout out one of my favorite of the new Super Shocks that they just came out with. This is the shade Birthday Wish. It looks very basic bitch in the pan, but it's basically this kind of like champagne sheer shade with a tiny bit of like pink duochrome running through it. It's so cool because it looks really basic and it looks very nice paired with like basic brown eye looks, but it just has that special something on the lid where it's slightly sheer, but it has this like nice luminescence to it. So it truly looks like a glossy lid without the disgusting feeling of an eye gloss. So I really like the shade a lot. I'm not sure if this is limited edition because it is part of their like birthday collection, but it's like a really glittery packed sheer super shock and I just love it with my entire heart. I hate myself okay. a lot for including this in the video, but also for even buying it, but I love it so much and I regret nothing. This is the Farsali Rose Gold Skin Mist and oh my God, I hate you, Gina. Gina Shketa or um, Jin's makeup here on YouTube, she basically uh, forced me at gunpoint to buy this face mist. It's not even really a setting spray, like it doesn't prolong the wear of your makeup, like melting things into your skin and making everything look very aggressively beautifully dewy. And this is everything I wanted in a face mist. Like basically any hydrating mist that's gonna like melt the powders into your face that has a very nice fine mist is gonna be great. This I've been just loving. I don't use it all that often just because it's expensive and I'm trying to conserve it and I really, really don't wanna repurchase this. But I think it's beautiful on the skin and if I really just want my face to look really good, I'll spray this on top and everything just looks, it just comes together. It brings the entire base together, it melts the powders in, it just makes everything look blended somehow and blurred and it's, great. But when I first bought the Kaja trios, I really didn't think that they were going to be anything super special in my collection. I mostly just bought them because I really like sparkly eyeshadow. And I was like, I should try out a new formula. But these have quickly become like one of my favorite things to wear, either on no makeup makeup days or on a day that I'm like, I just want to look really nice and pretty. I have one of the matte trios and one of the full shimmery trios. My favorite of the matte trios is Chocolate Dahlia. I saw Amrezy do a look with this on Instagram the other day. I really love the shimmer formula, of course. This is kind of what they're known for. It's just a really like glittery packed, very foil shimmer formula. It kind of reminds me of the Dose of Colors um, block party shadows if you want to try those at like a less exorbitant price tag. These are $21 for three eyeshadows, whereas Dose of Colors is I think $20 for one. But I prefer the matte trios over the full shimmery ones just because I feel like you can get a full look out of these ones. And Chocolate Dolly is my favorite because the mattes in here top notch. I wasn't really sure how the like colorful ones were going to be because Kaja is a Korean eyeshadow brand, I believe. I don't really find a lot of luck with Korean eyeshadows, but somebody on my last video that I mentioned these mentioned that she tried the purple one, which I was most concerned about because I swatched it in stores and it was, oh, awful. But she said it was actually really good. So overall, very much enjoying these ones. I'm a soul sister with Samantha Robin doll. And if she says she likes it, I do too. So these are awesome. And $21 is not that bad for a high-end eyeshadow palette. I love those. I'm going to buy more of those. It's hot girl summer. And for me, that really means just dousing yourself in Glossier. So the cloud paints have always been one of my favorites. I have these shades um, Dusk and Storm as well as a few others, but these are the ones I use the most often just because I really like mixing them. So what I'll kind of do is I'll take Dusk and I'll do like three dots all over my cheeks and I'll take Storm and I'll put like one dot right at the top of my cheek and then blend it all together. And I like having a little bit of a darker blush shade at the very, very top because it kind of blends in with the bronzer, creates a little bit like more like lift to your cheeks. So you kind of look like you had a facelift but not really and it just brings like some extra depth to your cheeks and makes everything look very nice and naturally sun-kissed so i really like these they do have a lot of color payoff to them so you really don't need to use a ton this is actually my second tube of dusk i've gone through two of these and that's 
just stupid for a cream blush, but I love them very much. And I think they're $18 each or something. So not too bad in terms of cream blushes. Some hot girl shit. Then the highlighter in my dreams is the Glossier Play Liquid Night Shine in shade Pale Pearl. I've talked about this too much on my channel. One of the best cream highlights I've ever tried. And it's the only like cream highlighter I've found that's this bright and shining. Like the cover effects drops are very, very blinding, I guess, but they don't really look natural on the cheeks. Whereas this, I feel like it really does melt with your actual skin. It just looks like you have wet, delicious, glossy, beautiful, juicy, hydrated skin. And that's kind of what I like going for. So this is very blinding, don't get me wrong. I'll post a picture I have with this one on in the sun. It's just like, golden hour beautifulness but it's really the best formula ever and surprisingly you really don't need a lot to get to a very nice blinding glow and i just love it so much so yeah i just realized i'm not wearing highlighter this is the worst day of my life wow okay i like how my skin was just dewy enough that it looked like i was wearing subtle highlighter but oh no i just forgot because i'm dumb oh yeah okay that's better problem solved whoa <laughs> Okay, that's really cool. Right? I get it. I've converted someone to the religion of Glossier. <laughs> Join our cult. We meet on Tuesdays. <laughs> primer lately, I've been really enjoying stuff that kind of fuses primer and skincare in one. I just really like putting something that has good ingredients as the first layer on my face before I um, cake my face in about six pounds of makeup. It just makes me feel a little bit better in my soul. So something I've been really enjoying lately has been the Uli Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. I saw a lot of like influencers talking about this one, but I didn't really see like an unsponsored review for a while. So I figured I'd just pick it up for myself and try it out just because it seemed like it had really nice like vitamin C natural ingredients in here, but still would be a really good primer. And I really, really love this one. So it definitely does bring your face to like a nice dewiness, but it's not too overwhelming like just gives a nice amount of like brightness <laughs> to your face but it also has some really good ingredients in there and i actively see like my dark spots and my hyperpigmentation being kind of like rectified by this so really enjoy this one it is definitely a bit more pricey but i think ule henriksen is one of those brands i think is just consistently really good and this is definitely worth it in my opinion cover fx is doing really well and i have another product from them in this video this is the cover fx power play concealer and i don't think it's overtaken my Too Faced Born This Way. I used this one this morning on my face with the Too Faced. Oh. Ah, stop, I could've dropped my croissant. I used this one this morning with the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. So I think these are a really good combo, but I feel like the Too Faced and the Cover FX are two concealers I can use with any foundation I have in my collection. Sometimes I have to kind of like finesse things and use different things with different foundations, but these blend really seamlessly with anything. And they're also really easy to layer on top of each other. So if I need to touch up my concealer for any reason, crying, which I do often, um, this is really nice for just like layering on top of existing makeup and it just blends in really well. So you definitely get a lot less product in here, but it is a bit more full coverage than the Too Faced ones. Depending on what you want, I think these are both really great options and these are definitely my number one and number two favorite concealers of all time. Have to shout these palettes out because these are one of the most like exciting makeup products I've had in my collection for a long time. And it sounds like a sad statement, but it's hard for me to get super, super excited about products anymore just because everything is being released at like such an insane pace. And it's just hard for me to get super hyped and like inspired by products, but these really did that for me. So I wanted to share them once again. These are from Kaleidos Makeup and these are the Futurism collection. Like a really well done, well conceptualized collection. It's just really gorgeous. Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze kind of looks like something I'm wearing on my eyes today, but I'm not actually using this palette right now. This one is my least favorite of the three, but I think it's still really beautiful. For a neutral palette, I do wish I had a few more like lighter shades in here, but that's just a personal gripe. I think the formula in here is bomb. Then Futurism 3 is my personal favorite. I just love the kind of like cooler tone berry shades in here and the shimmers. For all the aesthetic of this brand is kind of like to me Pat McGrath meets like alien space hero. It's really fun. I just think these are a really awesome release. The formula is one of the best I've tried in a very long time. Again, I really like mini palettes, especially for the season. I just feel like they're easy to reach for. I love having things that have a smaller, but like more well put together and well thought through color scheme. And these are definitely that. So yeah, love these. I never talk about hair products on this channel, but I've gone through quite the disgusting journey with my hair. Um, 
I fry my hair regularly and it's really annoying because I have very thick hair so when I have damage in my hair you can see it it's gross so I recently got a haircut and thankfully my hair is doing a lot better now it's nice and healthy but I'm trying to keep it healthy and something I've been integrating into my routine has been the Olaplex number three hair perfecter it's a bond repair so basically you use it before shampoo and conditioner you leave it in your hair and it actually like goes in it repairs your hair from the inside out and can kind of fix split ends it's one of the only products that really does stuff like that so i've been really loving this one i shampoo my hair about like two to three times a week depending on how how long i can go without feeling like i'm dying i'll try to leave it on for at least an hour sometimes i even like sleep with it on and that really helps to get everything like more saturated in then you just wash it out you do your normal shampoo and conditioner and i've just been really enjoying this one i feel like it really keeps my hair nice and like shiny and healthy and hopefully when i go back to have my hair cut in a couple months i won't have split ends hopefully i will see sustained results and so far I've been really liking it. Something I really was not expecting to love as much as I did has been the YSL All Hours. I knew that this was a very hyped up foundation, but I never really thought that I would enjoy it just because it seemed to be everything I hate in a foundation, which is matte, full coverage, really like long wearing, like an aggressive foundation foundation. And I just like things that are a little bit more like skin-like. Definitely one of the most full coverage foundations I own, but still I feel like you can use a smaller amount with this one just because it is more full coverage. So I can really cancel out all my redness while using a small amount of product. So it really doesn't look like I'm wearing a ton of foundation on my face. And it also is one of the most like long wearing crazy foundations I've had in a long time. This one, it says it's up to 24 hour wear. Don't do that. This one, it's just the most beautiful like skin like looking full coverage foundation. It looks really, really nice on the face and it lasts very well. So it is pricey, but I think the formula is one of the best I've tried in a while. I know, I'm mad at myself that I bought this too because it's basically a thick lotion in a tube for $25 or 48 if you buy the full size. But I caved and I bought this Summer Fridays jet lag mask because I'd heard so many really great rave reviews of this one, especially in the skincare community, which I've become more of a part of recently. But also I heard this one was really good at just like saving your skin when it's in a really like dire desperate moment of need and for me i've just been really dealing with a lot of sensitivity and dryness during summer which i didn't think was going to happen i thought i was going to have nice clear beautiful nicely hydrated and not too gross skin during summer but it's dry here really dry and there's earthquakes and the world is ending so i've been using this once a week it feels like a really thick look. It feels counterintuitive to put this on your face because it feels like a thick lotion that's gonna clog your pores and just make everything break out and gross. But I wake up and my skin feels like the butt of a newborn child. It's the softest, most delicious skin mask I've ever tried. And I just, <sighs> it's not gonna work for everyone. I think definitely for people who have oilier skin types, this might not be the thing, but if you have dry skin, you will love this one. So I would say definitely start out with a tester version or even just ask for a free sample um, if you want to. Sephora will do that for you. But if you do want to splurge and get the full size, I definitely will be repurchasing it in the full size when I run out of this one. And yeah, love this very much. It's It seems gimmicky. It seems like a lotion in a tube. And it kind of is, but it's like a special lotion. It's, it's the good kush. And then last of all, I love lip balm. I have an entire shrine dedicated to lip balm. Some people have thought that I have lip fillers just because my lips are like a bit more plump and kind of like smooth which normally people who have lip fillers have really like smooth across the top lips no it's just because i have lip balm on my lips at all times and i keep minimum four tubes of lip balm with me at all times so i can just reapply lip balm throughout the day the only time that i'm really concerned about my lips being dry is at night because obviously i'm asleep i can't reapply my lip balm so i like to have something on my lips at night that's really thick and it's gonna stay on my lips all night long and i've been really really loving the laneige lip sleeping mask lately this is a vanilla one i think they have a berry as well they have berry and they have a few other scents but i like the vanilla one it's just I like vanilla. Definitely very thick, but it's not too like greasy. So I feel like if I put it on, it's gonna stay in a very nice thick layer on my lips throughout the night. I'll wake up and it still feels like I have a fresh coat of lip balm on, but it also, it didn't like slip onto my chin and cause breakouts. It's just very, very nice. And it makes your lips feel very pillowy soft when you wake up. So I really like this one as my overnight lip mask. I'll use different ones throughout the day just to kind of refresh my lips. But this one is one of the only ones I use overnight and I love this. All right, guys, that is it for my current favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And as always, please let me know in the comments what you guys have been enjoying because I like um, purchasing things that I probably shouldn't and trying out new things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs 
up make sure you are subscribed down below and also follow me on instagram to see makeup looks comme ça every day and if you made it to the very end of this video you intergalactic manta rays you get the bonus meme goodbye <laughs>